an enclosed compartment can negatively impact survivability. As explained in the Lady D report, the buoyant safety device would have carried a wear upward when most people had to swim downward to escape. The circumstances in the stretch duck seven accident also indicate that donning a life jacket inside the rapidly sinking vessel would have resulted in the buoyant safety device pushing a person upward against the top of the enclosed space formed by the canopy and the closed side curtain. Wearing a life jacket would have impeded mobility, making it difficult, if not impossible, to exit through the windshield opening or on the port side where the curtain had been released and likely would have delayed escape. This photo shows the recovered vessel. Note the lowered side curtain that blocked escape on the starboard side. Also shown are some of the 41 life jackets still connected to the vessel's canopy framing by their straps. Staff believes that donning life jackets on a stretch duck seven, while fitted with an overhead canopy, would have created an impediment to escape, would have increased the risk of persons being entrapped, and could have resulted in additional fatalities. Staff has proposed a recommendation to address this finding. Following the Miss Majestic accident, the NTSB recommended that the Coast Guard require the removal of canopies for waterborne operations or installation of a Coast Guard approved canopy that does not restrict either the horizontal or the vertical escape of passengers in the event of sinking. The Coast Guard did not concur with this recommendation and did not take action. The Coast Guard told the NTSB in September 2002 that the NAVIC provided sufficient guidance. However, as demonstrated in this accident, Emergency egress was still impeded by the canopy and a side curtain during the rapid sinking. This accident demonstrates a deficiency in the guidance and or the application to the stretch duct seven. Staff believes that NAVIC 101 did not effectively address the NTSB's 2002 recommendation to require the removal of or Coast Guard approval of fixed canopies and consequently likely increase the number of fatalities. There are two other issues with the NAVIC. NAVIC 101 called for a company to have an operating manual that provides guidance on its operations to keep passengers safe. Companies like Ride the Ducks must use the NAVIC as a guide to create their operating manuals. However, the NAVIC does not address weather abort points. The yellow rectangle in the photo represents the threat area identified in the 1832 severe thunderstorm warning, which advised of 60 mile per hour gusts of wind that exceed the wind restriction on the certificate of inspection. Another concern is passengers being trapped. Because amphibious vessels lacking reserve buoyancy sink quickly, realistic guidance for emergency egress is needed to prevent passengers from being trapped in the vessel and still have access to life jackets. As found in the Miss Majestic in this accident, once it becomes apparent the vessel is in distress, a duck amphibious vessel sinks rapidly, not allowing time to prepare for or begin an organized abandonment. The circumstances found in the stretch duck seven sinking has raised areas of concern regarding escape. 
and waterborne operations with approaching severe weather that should be incorporated in an updated revision of the NAVIC. Staff believes NAVIC 101 does not account for circumstances found in the Stretch Duck 7 accident, including operations during approaching severe weather and emergency egress during rapid sinking. <laughs>